For more on the Afghanistan political climate, we are now joined by Professor John Srimlau, the Honorary Professor of International Relations at the University of the Witwatersrand. Professor Srimlau, very good evening to you. Thanks for joining us. Welcome to the Globe. Good evening. Good evening. Firstly, Professor, what do you think will be the impact of this withdrawal of American and NATO troops? I mean, there's already fears of a vacuum forming that could be exploited by the Taliban. Well, it's already the case that the Taliban uh, has uh, taken over about a third of the country, primarily in the north, and supposedly could, could march fairly quickly over another 40 percent of the country. Now, uh, Ashraf Ghani, who met with um, the president of Afghanistan, who met with Biden yesterday, he maintains that on Friday, the Afghan forces took back uh, uh, six districts or something that was uh, he was bragging about. But I, I think the history is on the side of the Taliban. Well, Professor, what do you make of U.S. President Joe Biden's pledge to continue financial and political support long after the withdrawal of the troops? I mean, there are fears that the withdrawal would lead to uh, a reduction in aid, uh, to diminishing political and diplomatic interests, and also uh, perhaps lead to the intensification of a proxy war in Afghanistan by countries in the region. Is there some truth to those concerns? Well, we don't know what's going to happen, frankly. Uh, there's a lot of conflicting reports, and people are trying to position themselves on this. Uh, uh, Ashraf Ghani and, and Abdullah Abdullah, who are speeding with, with, um, with Biden, were very positive about the government's capacity to withstand the Taliban attack. Uh, the facts on the ground seem to dispute that. Um, I think you've got to realize that uh, the U.S. went in uh, 20 years ago after 9-11 and the attack on the World Trade Center in order to root out the um, Al-Qaeda and, and Osama bin Laden. And that's all been done. Uh, I, my guess is that uh, while the Taliban would be uh, very uh, in their control, they would not, uh, they would not uh, uh, international terrorism from Afghanistan. Well, President Biden said that Afghans themselves would need to decide on their future and uh, what they want. This seems contrary to the reassurances that the United States would continue pumping in military and as well as financial assistance. Well, the, the U.S. Is, is asking Congress, or Biden administration is asking Congress for another $3 billion. The U.S. has already invested almost a trillion dollars, that would be about 14 trillion rand. Don't forget that uh, South African security forces are are probably uh, numbering quite a few in Afghanistan right now. The private security companies outnumber the U.S. troops and the NATO troops, and uh, there's some 16,000 of them there, and uh, they may well continue, but whether or not there are many South Africans in that mix, it's very hard for me to, to determine the G4S, which we see down here a lot, which is a British company, it has an awfully large a contingent of South African security people. We've got down here 450,000 uh, security, private security people. And uh, I would expect that a number of them are in Afghanistan. So this could be a story that you'll be following uh, for some time in light of the upheavals that are likely to occur in the aftermath of the U.S. and NATO withdrawal, even though Biden has been a, a, a very reassuring in saying that the U.S. would continue security assistance. But how important is that going to be when the Taliban seem to be meeting very little resistance in their sweep of the one-third of the, of the districts they've already taken? Mm. And uh, President Biden also announcing that the United States troops would be out of, of Afghanistan by September the 11th. How feasible this, this time, Lab, you think? Oh, it's very feasible. There's only 3,500. You know, at one point, we had uh, the U.S. had 100,000 troops in there. There are 3,500 troops. There are a number of other, other security people that are there, and they're presumably going to stay on a bit. But the NATO troops of uh, 7,500, they're coming out, too. And so it really is going to be left to the Afghan people and their private security companies, and we'll have to see what happens. But there, they, after 20 years, you know, this is an endless war. And uh, the American taxpayers are tying, tired of paying for it. There's an enormous pressure on, on COVID and other problems that uh, the economy, racial injustice. Um, the U.S. Can, cannot afford to be the world's policeman. 
Let me take you back to a conference in Kabul more than a decade ago where an Afghan leader likened the U.S. military invasion of his country to getting stabbed. In fact, let me just quote to you what he said. He said that you bleed upon impact, but how the knife is pulled out determines the seriousness of your wound and chances of survival. Very, very, you know, profound quote, I may say. How would you assess the U.S. occupation of Afghanistan in the past 20 years? Well, that's a very dramatic statement, and I think Biden came to office realizing that the U.S. could not be overextended in this way. He has been emphasizing, and he did so to the African Union summit, that the U.S. would rely on diplomacy, on multilateralism. I think that's something that the South Africans can applaud. I thought that uh, Cyril Ramaphosa's role of the G7 was very, very important, and it shows that there can be a democracy, a vibrant democracy in the South, but we face enormous problems down here, as you well know. And I just think that the U.S. should be a better partner for countries that can be uh, able uh, to partner. And, and while uh, Afghanistan is going to be a sore, the Russians didn't succeed there, the Americans have not succeeded there, the Afghans really are going to have to take care of their own uh, their own country. It's a small country of 35 million people, uh, isolated in South Asia. It does produce a lot of poppies and and drugs, as we know. Uh, but it 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 it's going to have to be a, a a responsible stakeholder in the region and internationally. It would seem to me, and you might as well give them a test. Well, the United States has spent approximately 144 billion U.S. dollars in Afghanistan on relief and reconstruction since 2002, but the region still remains fragile. Was the invasion all for naught, would you say? Well, again, the initial objective was to root out the uh, al-Qaeda, and, uh, and Osama bin Laden was, was quite elusive and was finally found in Pakistan near an air base there, the Air Academy. And, uh, and killed by U.S. Special Forces, remember, under during the Obama administration. Uh, I think they've accomplished that objective, certainly. And while they wanted to do nation building, America's not very good at nation building. And as that quote that you cited from a, year, a decade ago uh, reminds uh, uh, us that, that uh, the Taliban have been violent, but so have American troops. Um, and and it's it's not a not a great record. Um, it's it's a record that has been uh, a one that was was certainly committed by the by the American taxpayers and the nation for a while, but it's gone very thin. And, and 20 years later is enough. So I think Biden is absolutely right to uh, set a time frame and get out. To tell you the truth. There's also the threat of al-Qaeda, even though the Taliban did indicate that uh, al-Qaeda is no longer in Afghanistan. So should the Afghan authorities rest on their laurels? Well, I think we've got a real issue right next door in Mozambique right now with, yeah. uh, with, 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 with terrorists that, that claim to be part of the al-Qaeda network. And, uh, and, and the, the African um, peacekeeping force that the the SADC nations have been talking about is going to need some logistic and other support from countries like the United States, China, and others. And I think it's important to keep in mind that, that local initiatives and local agency really does matter. And, and we're past the age when, you know, the Americans went into Vietnam and it was a disaster. They went into Iraq and it was a disaster. And while you can't say that Afghanistan is a total disaster, it certainly is in a got a very problematic future after 20 years and a trillion dollars and 750,000 U.S. troops have cycled in and out of Afghanistan. Uh, you know, come on, it, there's there's got to be a limit to these kind of things, and and I think it's very healthy, and I think that Africans will applaud Biden for pulling out. Well, the deal that uh, the Trump administration signed with the militants, uh, you know, requires that they never provide a safe haven for terror groups. But U.S. officials say they've not completely broken ties with al-Qaeda, whose operatives uh, trained, uh, trained in and planned the September 11 attacks from Afghanistan. So uh, could this give rise, uh, perhaps, uh, to the fact that they are well, on their I way back to Afghanistan? We have to watch what the Taliban will do. I have no, uh, no, no time for the, the, the Trump uh, foreign policy. It, it was incompetent, it was erratic, it was nationalistic, it was racist. I mean, I could go on the list. 
so that, uh, you know, I don't think that the Trump administration knew at all what they were doing. I see real professionals and, and, and a willingness to work with multilateral institutions and on things like COVID and, 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 the, and climate change by the, the, the Biden administration, and I welcome that. You know, the, the U.S. has done what it can do in Afghanistan. It's not great, but it's done what it can do, and it's time to say goodbye. All right, Professor Strimlau, great chatting to you. Thank you so much for your time. My pleasure. All right, that is uh, Professor John Strimlau, an honorary professor of international relations at the University of the Vietvatersrand.